Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question. So we have to find the values of M and B. So this limit over here, the limit as X approaches zero of the square root of MX plus B minus three all over X is equal to one. So this is a pretty cool question. A student sent it to me, thought it was pretty unique. So I thought I would make a video solution for it. Now, notice that this limit, I'm gonna actually just rewrite it over here. So we got the limit as X approaches zero of the square root of MX plus B minus three all over X. So I'm just gonna work with this left side of this equation. Notice this is an equation because there's this equal sign here. And notice that this limit in particular, first off, we can't do a direct substitution because if we plug in zero for X, notice this denominator here is gonna be zero. So direct substitution is not gonna work. And notice that we have this square root here, right? We have this radical. And whenever we have that, in most cases, what we're doing to solve the limit is we're rationalizing it. And that's what we're gonna to have to do here. So notice this mx plus b, that's just a linear function under the square root. And so I'm going to go about solving this limit here like this would be a regular limit. Like there was actual numbers over here. And I'm gonna rationalize this numerator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate. So the square root of mx plus b, this term stays the same. We switch the sign, and then that n term stays the same. And what we're gonna to do to the top, we're also gonna to do to the bottom. So I'm just taking this limit here, and then I am solving it. So notice that the next line, what's gonna happen is we're gonna have the limit as x approaches zero. This times this is mx plus b, right? The square root goes away. And then negative three times positive three, that gives us minus nine, like that. And then there's not gonna be any middle terms, right? This is going to be a difference of square, so we just have to multiply it by the end terms. And then the bottom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these two terms separate. So I'm gonna have an x over here and then I'm gonna have the square root of mx plus b plus three, like that. So we're at this point. Now, what do we have to do here? What are we trying to do? We're trying to get rid of this x in the denominator. And notice that because this x is only by itself, the only way we can get rid of this x from the denominator is if there is a corresponding x that's by itself in the numerator, right? So notice that if we have an x over here, if we end up with something like x plus three in the numerator, notice that we can't cancel out these x. Or if we end up with something like x minus two over x, can't cancel out the x's. The only way that this x is gonna cancel out is <clears throat> if we have an x by itself in the numerator, and there can also be a constant attached to it. So let's just put a c there for now. Even if there's a constant attached to it, so if it's like 5x or negative 3x, or if it's just x by itself, then the x's can cancel out. And so in order for that to happen here, notice that this m in front of this x is like this c. It's like a constant. And then notice that this b is going to be some kind of value, some kind of number, and then we have this minus nine. So in order for this x to cancel out with this x, basically this portion here has to net out to zero. This has to go away, and then it's gonna be in this format, and then the x's can cancel out. So if this has to net out to zero, notice that b minus nine has to equal zero. And so we could tell that b has to be nine in order for us to keep going in solving the limit. And so that's actually the uh, answer to the first part, to half the question, right? We're solving for m and b. We gotta get rid of this term here so the x's cancel out. So we know that the b value, I'll write the solution up here, is nine. It has to be nine, right? Because if it's something other than nine, let's say it's 10, then we're gonna end up with mx minus uh, or uh, mx plus one. Or if this b value is let's say um, eight, 
right? Eight minus nine is negative one. We're gonna end up with mx minus one. Then this x is not gonna cancel out. The only way the x cancel out is if the b value is nine. So now notice that we can plug in nine over here and there's also that b value over here. We could plug in nine over here. So what's the next line gonna be? We're gonna have the limit as x approaches zero of mx all over x times the square root of mx plus nine plus three. That's what the next line is gonna be. And now notice that the x's cancel out. And now what we can do is we could sub in zero for x, right? Because this x went away with this one. So if we plug in zero for x, notice the only x term remaining is this one. So m times zero is just zero. So we're going to end up having m this over the square root of nine plus three, which is going to equal m over six. All right, so let's forget about this part. Just this limit uh, over here, if the b value is nine throughout, right, we sub that in here, that limit is gonna end up equaling m over six, right? And that b value of nine allows the limit to exist because if, again, one more time, if the b value is not nine, then this x here is not gonna cancel out with an x and therefore the limit is not going to exist, but we're told that the limit does exist and it equals one. So when the b value is nine, the limit does exist, this general limit here, and it's equal to m over six. So we know m over six has to equal one, if that makes sense. Right, square root of nine plus three, three plus three, we end up with six in the denominator, and then we got this m at the top still. So m over six has to equal one because we're told that this limit is gonna equal one. And so we can just cross multiply here, m is equal to six. And so that is the answer to this question. So pretty unique question, uh, pretty tricky question. So I thought I would make a video to it. And then you can actually test this. Like you can, uh, if we plug in these values, so if we got the limit as x approaches zero, of the square root of 6x plus 9 minus 3 all over uh, x, right? The m value is uh, 6 and then the b value is 9. If we solve this limit here, right, if we rationalize this, notice what's going to happen is we're gonna end up with the limit as x approaches zero, square root times square root of six x plus nine, negative three times positive three is minus nine, all over x times the square root of six x plus nine plus three. The nines cancel out, and then we have six x over x, the x's cancel out, now you could do a direct substitution, you're gonna end up with six over, six times zero is zero, plus nine is nine, square root of nine is three, three plus three is six, that equals one. So once you get these values, you could actually check your answer. You could solve that limit as if you were given it by itself. And then it indeed does equal one with that M and B value.